from this baguette figure. Today with a really special video, I'm going to reveal my watch collection. After all these years, <laughs> right now is the time. Let's go. <laughs> A special video for me, huh? Yeah. Since 2016, the people are asking for this. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch King. Welcome to a very special video. As you see, I'm here with the one and only Mark Gebauer from Germany, the biggest guy in German YouTube watch history so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quite big introduction. Thank yes, you very much for having me. We are here in your uh, your mecca of all things beautiful, uh, but today we're going to focus on your watch collection, yeah. which is something very rare. Like you said, this nobody saw it before. People probably saw some pieces from time to time from the videos you make, yeah. because Mark has a very big YouTube channel. I'm going to put a link in the description so you guys can check it out. Thank you. You're one of those guys who really tests out ideas, I would say. I saw you once do a video on the side of the building. Uh, you jumped from the airplane to deliver a watch, I think, yeah. right? So, how did you start your whole, let's say, watch journey and how did you then transition into uh, selling watches, essentially? So, the first one uh, is this, uh, the, the purest uh, of, of them all, yeah. uh, besides the 5513. This one is the re-edition. Back at the day, no one wanted it. Yeah. This, this watch is a two-liner submariner yeah. uh, with no superlative certificate. Yeah. This watch at that time, it was the least attractive one. Yeah. Because of my graduation, my father gifted me one. And at that time, the watch was approximately around, let's say, 2,000 euro. It was not that high yeah. product. And I didn't even know anything about this kind of luxury watches. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I, I focused on it and I read about them. And then I saw the price also. At that time, I didn't have that much money. And uh, somehow I really feel attracted to this kind of mechanical wristwatches. And uh, then I, I switched jobs after I studied to a gentleman's shop for suits and all this kind of stuff. And then, yes, I mean, every euro I earned, let's, let's say at the end of the first year when we built up the online shop there, uh, I got the bonus and the 10,000 euro I bought a watch. Yeah. So, and this is how it started and uh, since then, all money I make, I put into watches. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, no money and a big collection. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then I start selling watches. <laughs> so I remember watching videos with you from a different YouTube channel, mm -hmm. where I first found out about you. And you also work with many other work and also collaborate with other German influencers yeah. and also now across the world. So how did you then transition to setting up your own shop, let's say? What clicked? Uh, I wanted to change some things. If you go on my YouTube channel, I don't do the conservative stuff. So yeah. like you already said, uh, one time I bungee jumped with uh, Richard Mill and I set the time. Uh, I do all this kind of crazy stuff. And um, I wanted at that time no boundaries. And th this was the best way to just do everything what I want, what yeah. I like. And uh, there are also some videos which I didn't do until now. Uh, yeah. I, I want to dive with a white shark without a cage and uh, review the deep sea. Yeah. Okay, th this is one big dream. <laughs> and this, uh, I just, I, I need to be on my own. Yeah. 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 So that's why we have the company. And uh, this, this really yeah, are the steps. Oh, the steps. And it's big. And I, when I came here, it was cool to see the operation, the people and how many articles you actually have. I see your perfumes in the background as well. Yeah, if, if you don't know me, we, we, say, we say fragrance, the best fragrance in the world. Then we have all kind of different things which are just fun to have. Yeah. And uh, we always try, try to do more stuff and uh, we have our own collection of clothes and yeah. yeah, just everything step by step. Yeah, the clothing is really good. I have a few pieces myself. Yeah. They always smell nice. Yeah. So I found that from your mom last time you guys like Perfume. Perfume it, so yeah. I'm like, yeah, makes sense now. So back to the watches, what was the next step in the Submariner, let's say, from what's on the table? Yeah, after that, the next watch in the collection is uh, this Breitling. Mm -hmm. It was, it's not uh, that expensive watch. Mm -hmm. At the time, I paid around 2,000 euro. It's the first automatic chronograph. Then it was in a race with Breitling, who would develop the first one, obviously, El Primero, was the first automatic chronograph, and here, we have the crown on the other side. And this is the, the second one. It's a Navi timer from the 80s, yeah. I think. And nice patina. This was the, the next watch. I don't wear it that much, mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to sell it either. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You probably wear other watches also, which you offer. Yeah. Because I see it's more on, convenient. on your yeah. stories as well, like yeah. this watches came in or 
things like that. So what's what's the next piece you want to show the us? The next here? one, a big connection I have with Omega. Mm -hmm. Omega is a big part of what we sell to the younger audience or top seller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that Omega is doing a great job in terms of price increase, the collection, and they just do great stuff. I bought the Alaska project when no one wanted it. <laughs> this one was in the store for, I don't know, one year or yeah. so. The price was under 4,000 euro. Um, it has a special cage. Yes. There is a special red cage with yeah. it. I have the original invoice and the, the complete set. And I have here the, the red strap on it. It's a limited edition, uh, 1,970 pieces. Yeah, and I just like it. And the yeah. price went up crazy. Yeah. Oh, is it above 20? I'm sure it is. Huh? Uh, I think around 20,000 yeah. euro. Especially full set. Yeah, with yeah. the original invoice and um, yeah, this is this is, this was the next watch. I just wanted to have it because it's <laughs> white with red and red is also one of my favorite colors. Yeah, nice, nice. And then we just go to the next Rolex watch, which we have here. This one is the GMT Master with the plexiglass um, matte dial. Um, the price at that time was, I don't know, 10,000 or so euro. Nice. Uh, it has a nice patina. The yeah. bezel kind of faded here to a sky blue. Mm -hmm. And um, beautiful. Yeah, on the Jubilee bracelet, you don't find them that often. The condition is. That's really good. Very good. Just immaculate almost here. And it's just a classic piece. Yeah, everyone should have a Pepsi in their collection. I think so. I think so. Either modern if you can get it. Or if not, also, let's say, if you buy it on the secondary market, the uh, vintage one is sometimes very affordable. Yeah, would be also my recommendation in case you want to get a watch right now in these times where the prices go up and down, just learn from the past, 16750. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the, probably the best choice you can yeah. buy right now. Awesome. The next one is, uh, yeah, it's a quartz watch. It's a crowd favorite brand. <laughs> Hublo. Here we have one which you cannot buy. It's written on the dial. Literally. Not for sale. Uh, so don't message him. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah it, interesting story about this one. A good friend of mine, Samir from England, uh, after a fair, he, he showed me that watch and I said, I want to have it. He said, put something in my pocket <laughs> and then you can keep it. Yeah? Nice. Uh, and yeah, the good old days. The good old days, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much it is right now. Uh, there's one for sale, which I know for around 5,000 Swiss wow. francs. Wow. Yeah, but this used to be like a, a substitution watch, basically, right? Yeah, if you give your gold watch to service. Yeah, or you, your high complication yeah, piece, they give they you give a Hublot in the meantime. And uh, somehow it ended up in the gray market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, now it's in my hand. It's cool. Some people joke like it's a swatch, basically. Yeah. Because the material and the feel is similar. But it's cool because it's the same classic fusion case, the size. I mean, hands, I love same. it. Same. Yeah. All the same. I love it a lot. I would buy, but at 5K, I think it's too much. Yeah. You can buy the titanium one with the Salita movement. Wow, you're Salita right. Movement, yeah. So. You're right. Yeah. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, after 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 this one, I acquired another Omega. Mm -hmm. It's the it's called Tintin. It was in the basic collection. It's not a limited edition, mm -hmm. but yeah, nothing. But but it's uh, it's an interesting watch with this kind of uh, white and red yeah. outer dial. Yeah. And um, it got discontinued, and all of a sudden, right now, it's around twelve thousand euro. <laughs> and what was the price back then? Back then, 3,200. Yeah. And you're big on Amiga because when the Moon Swatches came out, I saw you pushing the reduced ones off. Yeah. Reduced so. is the best watch you can buy around. Yeah. Let's say there's also a version Speedmaster Date, which mm -hmm. you can get yeah. for 2,200, 2,500 yeah. euro. And it's a real watch. Huh? And it's a mechanical yeah. watch from Omega, which will last for you, your whole yeah. life. And then if we if we move on to the next purchase for around, I don't know, what was it? 18,000 euro. Uh, in this box here. <laughs> For all of you guys, probably on your channel, I don't need to explain the box. And here we have a Patek Philippe Nautilus 3710. This is uh, one with a power reserve indicator. Same what I also told you about the other ones. No one at that time, no one <laughs> wanted it. And the special thing is this unworn. We have here. Unworn. Yeah, this is, and this is brand new. Also, this one stayed in the shop for over one year. Yeah. It's the Nautilus with the power reserve indicator. The difference is also the case is a transitional model between the 3700 and the 5711. It has just two parts. Mm. Power reserve at uh, 12 o'clock. And the logo at 6, huh? which is... Uh, yeah, logo at 6 o'clock. Opposite now. And um, this watch was then uh, 18,000 euro. Yeah. 
And right now it's around 110 or so. No? Okay. It's a really rare model. And if I need to choose a Nautilus, I would always yeah. go for this one. Yeah. It's uh, just unique. I mean, with they, they would never yeah. do it now. No, forget it. Even with the beautiful Roman numerals here, yeah. loomed, and you have the box. I mean, and the condition is amazing. Eh? Yeah, like, this uh, one is new. Yeah, <laughs> this one is new with the. Uh, I have, I have everything. Just it's just new. Then we switch from Patek yeah. to Audemars uh, Piguet. Here I have a set of two watches. Uh, one I got, I don't know, 2020, end of 2020. This is called uh, Tuxedo. Yeah, um, I saw it it's the cute. first time on Houdinki. Houdinki. Yeah, with the with the rapper and producer Pras. Yeah, yeah, it was one of the first videos I also saw. And believe it or not, since then I'm hunting down this watch. Yeah. Since then I wanted it because it's so pure. You just have a P12 and the hands. It's amazing watch, yeah. and Beautiful you don't find dial. it online. Yes, yeah, no way, no way. And a nice movement as well, huh? With the Scott nice yeah. rotor. Uh, the Super cool. 15202 movement, yeah. and also I got one mechanical. 33 millimeter, the pair for my wife. For the wife, yeah. So you, you go couples watch, basically. Yes, this is a nice set. Do you wear it or rarely? Mm, rarely. I, I order now new straps, mm -hmm. um, but the occasion when when you want to wear them, it's yeah. not so easy. But maybe if we go to some kind of uh, event, AP maybe event or yeah. something. Yeah. AP event, yeah. If they <laughs> invite me for they the, love you. you know, <laughs> you know. Funny thing is, today I called uh, one AP house and. The guy, I'm always joking with him. He knows who I am, yeah. and so, and I, I asked him for one watch, uh, just some details, and then he asked, "Okay, something else, Mr. Gebo." I said, "Yeah, I'm waiting for my uh, 16202. Where is it? The, the one with the green dial?" He said, "Ah, it's in delivery. <laughs> it's coming soon. It's coming soon." I said, "And double balance skeleton?" Yes. He said, "This awesome. should be with you today." Same, same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, this is not uh, the only AP, but uh, later we will feature the the yeah my my latest acquiry. Yeah. Um, if we switch now the brand to uh, Richard Mill RM33, um, it's it's a round version and it's somehow yeah. really nice. Cool. Huh? Very cool. Uh, I got this uh, for, for eight thousand Swiss francs. <laughs> Also, this <laughs> reference you don't find online that many. Yeah, I'm sure. Just, I'm the, sure. just the carbon version. Uh, the price was last year <laughs> around 55, 60,000, less than 60,000 yeah. euro. The strap is too short. My wife mm -hmm. wears this one sometimes. Uh, what do you think of round RMs? In person, I actually like it. Like, let's say I prefer the tonneau shape. I think it's just a classic mm -hmm. RM shape. But this is actually very wearable and the movement is clean. The coating is nice on the on the crystal. I wouldn't buy it for 55 either. No? I think I know too much about watches to do that probably. You, you would not buy it? Because it's RM, yes. Oh. But if it, there was no, no brand name on it, no. It's just two hands without nothing. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the washer movement, so, you know. Uh, but it's super light and, and super wearable. But now, what's the price now? What do you think? 110. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, then uh, number 33, this one is the number one. Uh, it's uh, one collaboration, the first collaboration uh, from a watch brand with us. Yeah. And Congratulations. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Frank Müller, they were not scared. They said, okay, come on, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, here we have uh, yeah, two hand watch, the Slim S, the first time put on a metal bracelet, all matte finished. And what I offered to my audience one year ago almost, is that uh, they can get the watch for 10,000 euro yeah. and they can give it back to me right. all the time for 10,000. They just need to keep the box and papers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I fixed the price at 10,000 euro, almost like the USDT. <laughs> and uh, this was my first step into the world of watches or to do a color collaboration. Yeah, like with a real brand, not like a modifier or something. Yeah. It's not very easy for me because yeah. they are all scared. They say, oh, he's a gray market yeah, dealer sure. somehow. But, you know, because we are that big, there's no way around. And we are also planning something new with uh, Hoffman. Oh, nice. Hoffman yeah. watches. From New York? Uh, no, uh, no, Hoffman is, I think, from the north. Okay. Um, and yeah, if there is someone out there, one brand, which is also not scared of us, then uh, it's you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> contact us. I would love to do a collaboration uh, with some brands. I have um, ideas in my mind. Yeah. Uh, it's always colorful here. We have blue dial. It comes with three different straps, blue, leather, black leather and the metal one. Very cool. And it's and very it's super comfortable as well. Huh? Yeah. You know, people th people think of tonneau shaped cases. They think of RM. Frank Miller was before RM, but obviously the the tonneau shape was, uh, 
I think introduced by maybe Patek, Cartier, 1910 or so, yeah. But again, a very cool watch. And I love that you have this buyback uh, option because you basically tell your audience, I'm comfortable enough in the brand. I believe in the future. And I, if you buy it, you can wear it, give it back. You get the money back. I think Tom, it's cool. I, I said this because my audience usually is a little bit younger. Maybe yes. they, yeah. they change in taste and at the end, 33 watch is not a problem. And if they don't want it, they can just give yeah. it back. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Then uh, let's stay Very with cool. tonneau shape watches. Here is one uh, one of one. We have here the Richard Mill prototype a in one of one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jesus, this was a uh, twenty five thousand Swiss francs. <laughs> this was a little bit more expensive. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> uh, prototype written on the backside. Um, yeah, it has a special. Uh, alloy ceramic yeah. is the material the outer material you see it's a little bit more brownish and uh, it has been produced as a predecessor of the rm 1105 the one with the 150 piece limited edition and this was the one they made it says the same color combination it's uh, difficult to put a price on it yeah. but uh, what do you think i don't know if the, you put it in a good auction let's say the the normal model the normal model is around 750,000. Yeah, peanuts. So yeah. at the end, it should fetch the same, let's say. At least. Yeah. yeah. So one mil upwards. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's for you. <laughs> what do you think? Leave a comment down below. <laughs> I love to wear this watch on special occasions, yeah. you know, because if you enter a room with a prototype RM, you don't need to talk. This is just yes. everything. Everyone knows, okay, this is done. When I saw you in Geneva at the last the Watches and Wonders, you had this on, right? Yeah, I had okay. this on. Yeah, cool. I, I, the, the funny thing is I wanted to give this one uh, to auction. Yeah. First time I contacted Philips, I think one, one year ago. And I wanted to have an interview. My audience is a little bit younger, mm -hmm. so I said, okay, I want to feature it and uh, cover all of this. And somehow they the got process, back. Huh? Yeah, they got back to me, but I don't know. Somehow it didn't work out. I mean, if there is one auction house who says, let's do it, let's, I don't know, you can come to us, you can have an interview, we can chat a little bit, you can feature the whole event. Yeah. It would be a good time maybe to give it to auction. Awesome. So you guys from the auction houses, which I know you're looking. <laughs> yeah. huh? This is a good opportunity, yeah. I think. A good story, a good reach as well. Young audience, like you said, so I think it will be a no-brainer. Yeah, no one covers it sure. from the back, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Behind it's very the scenes. mysterious all the time. Yeah, you see the people in the audience yeah. raising their hands on it. the phone and that's it. Yeah, and uh, you don't see how it comes to them, how they process it. What they do. It. Yeah, yeah. True, yeah. True, true, true. That would be a cool video, for sure. Then uh, we switched the brand. This is my watch when I go to Senegal or Uganda. We build a school in Uganda. Yeah. Uh, this is done hopefully uh, yeah, end of this year. Nice. And uh, this is the watch I wear there. Yeah. It's IWC. Very cool. Porsche compass, design. Huh? Yeah, with the compass and moon face. It's very light. Mm. And I bought it on, on, on a website from a private person okay. uh, with box and papers and certificate, everything. Hmm. And uh, this is just the things I, I love. The condition is perfect. Yeah. And it was with me all around the world. Really? Yeah. Nice. It's cool because people don't recognize it probably. Yeah. yeah. They don't even know what it is. <laughs> it's super light, huh? Titanium or no? Titanium. It feels yeah. even lighter. It's crazy. One of my friends has one, uh, Julius. I think green brown dial, if I'm not mistaken. Super also cool. Also moon face? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not there sure. Are I gotta versions. check. I gotta check. But it's good for Africa. If you get lost, just compass, okay. you check yeah. where you are. Super easy. Then you know where you are. You just open and you know where to go. <laughs> nice. Very cool piece. We then switched. we go to another yeah. African, yeah. African watch. Theme, huh? Crazy one. Ride the line and just wear this piece. This was also <laughs> featured in some videos. I don't know if it was one year ago. I went in on this model. It's very big. I bought yeah. four pieces or so. I, I emptied the whole market. Yeah. Um, it's factory set Leopard. I mean, you know it from the picture, the, the from... Um, Tiger King. <laughs> uh, no, not Tiger King. Uh, Nicolas Cage. Yes. Nicolas yeah. Cage. He's an owner, yes, uh, exactly. Where's one? Producer Michael has also one. Yeah. Uh, best regards not to surprised. him. Not <laughs> surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> and uh, this was, was always uh, sold around 58 to yeah. 62,000 euros. Nobody Euro. really wanted that. No. Yeah. And it's highly, highly collectible, yeah. all done by Rolex. And right now the price is between 120 and 140,000 euro, yeah. but it will rise even further. I'm sure. Um, and I, I just like it. I wore mm. this one also on the video shoot of uh, yeah. Arabian King in the desert. Of this uh, perfume, yeah. you have some crazy perfume launch videos, huh? Let yeah. me say that. Yeah, this, so. this was the, the most expensive one. Yeah. 
Raving King, the la latest we uh, released. And uh, let's see what we are going to do for Berserker. Mm -hmm. This is our next one uh, after summer. And uh, yeah, after. Jump off the plane. Uh, the uh, maybe, I will, maybe I will hunt down some animals in the in the woods or so <laughs> i don't know yet <laughs> awesome yeah <laughs> if you have wild animals and uh, you know that's a guy for you or if you're a white shark just contact him <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then even more decorative is our last watch yeah, here a it's... very under the radar type of watch yeah if you wear... <laughs> for german streets this is the latest acquisition Audemars Piguet, Royal Oak, Sick. Double Balance, <laughs> Rainbow, Frosted Gold in White Gold. Yeah. It's uh, fully stickered, that's why I cannot wear it. 37 millimeter, I just liked it from the picture. And yeah, it's then a great size. One dealer had it, so I, I got it. Um, where, where would you wear this watch, let's see, if you have to pick one city in the world? Uh, to wear it? Yeah. I mean, if you are in New York and you have an evening occasion, this would be the watch. In all in white tuxedo, bam, this watch. Amazing ah, it's a cool piece, piece of art. Man. It's a cool piece, really cool piece. I love it. And the size is great, actually. Yeah. There's you had also 137. Yes, blue, 15450 blue dial. It's a perfect size. And I have big wrists, you as well. No? Yeah. But that's why I always say before you buy a watch, try to, try to see it in person. Because the number, let's say 36 millimeters, sounds small for big guys. But some watches on the wrist, they were a bit bigger. Ah, yeah. As a, one thing we need to clarify, Sylvester Stallone, if he ah. wears 36 millimeter day date, yeah. uh, then you so, can wear it yeah. also. Yeah, True. It's, it's a personal taste. Yeah. If you are a little bit more elegant, 36 is perfect. I wear also 36. Yeah. Uh, if you want to wear it bigger, then bigger. Remember the time when Audemars Piguet, everyone wanted offshore, Panerai and all this. Mm. All of a sudden it changed. So it's just temporary. And the Be big sure. uh, AP Survivor watches. Yeah. Stallone Terminator, big pieces. Yeah. So let's say with, with your collecting, yeah. What's next? Let's see. Or what would you? What What is your personal goal as a watch collector? A specific watch or a custom piece from a big brand, or I mean, or just a sixteen two o two? No, I, I. I mean, uh, what I like is, is the Sky Moon. I, I think the reference is six one zero two platinum from Patek. This is one watch which I want to have. Yeah. When I'm older. Yeah. Um, but for my collection, it's not very easy to find something new. Uh, there's always this kind of not very popular watches like this I'm attracted to. So I need to hunt down. Uh, yeah. Maybe I will build something for a limited edition. Yeah. Obviously, this will be, find a place in my collection. But if we now go to, let's say, Nautilus 5711, do I want to have the green one? No. So, you know, if I check out the newer models, I Nothing don't speak uh, No, it's not that I find them that attractive yeah. to, to put them into the yeah. collection. I just want to do business then and sell them. Yeah. Um, Maybe more this neo, neo vintage stuff. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. Beginning of 2000s and onwards, yeah. or the 90s, late 90s. Ni 90s, this is my favorite yeah. type of watch. So what's next for your business? Because you are now in, we're now in Germany. Yeah. But I know you have big goals, big yeah. plans. No, what we, what we are doing or what the next step is clear. Uh, my audience already knows it. We have the permission, the work permit for America. So everything nice. is approved. I just need to get back the passport. Then we can go there, open the company and start working. Congratulations. Which, uh, which part of the US? Uh, I mean, I need to have guests in my videos mm -hmm. and I want to do the same like in Germany. Germany uh, to work with the, my friends, which are in the also influential yeah. industry. So I need to go to Los Angeles. Los Angeles uh, yeah. I know there I have some contacts already there and it's just, you know, we, I just want to have fun. Yeah. I want to create some content like I always do to, to do some crazy stuff. Yeah. And uh, then we are going to start their online shop with all our products, fragrances and watches, clothes, uh, coffee, espresso, all this kind of stuff. And then let's see. And in October, uh, we hopefully can open uh, our boutique in Dubai. Awesome. It will not be that big, okay? But I mean, it will be one company there. Of course, but it's big. I mean, from from people who let's say know you as a watch YouTuber. Yeah. I mean, what you achieved so far is amazing, and I, I'm not just sucking up to you. I really mean <laughs> it, because it's cool to see behind the scenes. I'm always curious when I see somebody's channel. What does this guy actually do? How does it operate? What's yeah. the you know strategy or whatever? So I can learn and you know it inspires me as well as a creator. So Mark, thank you so much you know for yeah. showcasing your collection. You guys comment down below which one you like the best. Yeah. And uh, but you know, we need to do something. What? Yeah. The, the <laughs> 
normally if a, if a, if a, um, a guest or if, if we upload something like this yeah. you need for the algorithm you need to give them something the audience so if the first who comments no 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 let's put it that way we, <laughs> we, <laughs> you need to comment and okay. you need to like and you need to follow the channel yeah, and yours and mine okay and yours. but the most important thing is to comment and like the video and yeah. then we are going to give away three fragrances yeah. so my three we have a tiger uh, orange flamingo and arabian king and so this is what you need to do okay so we'll pick three people three different from people from the comment section it's the easiest to do yeah We'll check if you follow everybody, so you know, do the whole thing. And then uh, let's leave it running for uh, for a week. One week. I'm gonna put the info in the description so you guys can check it out. And that's it. Very generous. Thank you so yeah, much. I appreciate perfect. it. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much again. All the best to you and uh, we'll see you probably next, next time, huh? time if the people are interested in some other stuff like Atmos uh, or pens yeah. or other collections then we can meet again yeah for sure because you're moving to a new place yeah. and I can't wait to see it yeah so guys thank you as always and I will see you next Friday bye 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 <laughs>